one tiny protein may play a major role in both fertility and infertility. The protein is called ubiquitin. It's also known as the kiss of death. The kiss of death is really an unfair moniker for this little protein. It's actually one of the body's most amazing quality control tools. Quality control is very important in reproduction because it's one of the most energy costly events in a living organism. So it's very important that both the egg and the sperm be healthy and viable. This is where ubiquitin steps in. Peter Sotofsky, an associate professor of fertility physiology for the University of Missouri, discovered that this protein is attracted to deformed sperm. So we found that somehow ubiquitin, which typically is found inside the cells, finds its way and attaches itself specifically to the surface of defective sperm cells. And that uh, was very obvious chance to explore it as a marker of abnormal sperm cell. Once defective cells are tagged by ubiquitin, it is the kiss of death as far as the body is concerned. This is part of a recycling system. It may be a cleanup mechanism. It also may be a mechanism to render these defective sperm cells neutral, to neutralize them so they do not have negative effect on the normal sperm cells. Sotofsky says ubiquitin also plays a vital role in the development of sperm cells. Essentially, the sperm cells arise from uh, male germ cells, and they have to go through very complicated and very exactly regulated process of differentiation before they become a true sperm cell. And so this ubiquitin proteasome pathway is very important for this process. And if the pathway is dysregulated, we see reduced sperm counts or even complete lack of fully differentiated mature sperm cells. Okay. So we understand that ubiquitin is important in sperm development. But does this knowledge have a practical application? Sotofsky says, indeed, it does. In humans, we can use it to diagnose male infertility, which can then help clinicians to make the decision about treating. And when I say treating, it means treating infertile couple, not only the man. Because there are different etiologies of infertility, male, female, combined, unexplained infertilities. And based on what can be revealed by proper examination of a sperm sample, you can then formulate better strategy for treating an infertile couple. We can actually make an attempt to improve a sperm sample that is being used for infertility treatment in humans. When infertile couples turn to science to help conceive, the success can be hit or miss. Sotofsky says his research team is studying whether sperm quality may be involved in the occurrence of spontaneous abortion. Is there a contribution of these not perfect, less than perfect sperm cells contributing to the incidence of spontaneous abortions in couples that underwent infertility treatment? Because that unfortunately is fairly common that you observe that certain percentage of couples that underwent the treatment and had uh, in vitro fertilization, had embryo transfer, established pregnancy, but then unfortunately they lose it in the first trimester due to spontaneous abortion, which is not completely understood. There is some indication that the quality of sperm that is used for that in vitro fertilization has some to do with it. According to Sotofsky, in natural reproduction, sperm must overcome multiple hurdles to reach their target. This is the female side of the quality control process. Poor quality sperm are less likely to reach the egg. Sutovsky says in artificial fertilization, these quality control steps are bypassed. We go as far as taking a single sperm cell and injecting it in an egg, bypassing not only the quality control steps that have to do with the male side, but quality control steps that have to do with the sperm ability to bind to the egg coat, penetrate the egg coat, fuse with the actual egg. We're skipping all that and we're just putting that sperm cell that we choose based on our sort of subjective judgment, putting it right in the egg. Sotofsky says he hopes that his research will eventually help improve the success rate for infertile couples using artificial fertilization. I'm Debbie Johnson.